today. I'm with Harriet Gagan. She's a WeChat marketing expert, and today she's going to talk to us about marketing property to the Chinese. So thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. So Harriet, how long have you had your agency, and um, what was the impetus for starting it in the first place? Yeah, great question. So we started the business about two years ago, and it came out of, um, I guess, our own experience of trying to market property to Chinese. So I used to work for a marketing agency that worked exclusively for property developers and we had a network of real estate agents, many of whom were Chinese. And my role there was to create them any kind of marketing collateral or asset that they were looking for to help them make sales. And one of the things we were constantly being asked for was WeChat. They'd say, can you send me that on WeChat? Have you got a post on WeChat? Can I share something on WeChat? And we were going, well, what is, what is WeChat? And they'd find out what that is. So we started doing some research um, and I discovered it was one of the biggest apps in the world that we, had no we knew nothing about, <laughs> which I guess when you think about it, China being one of the biggest populations in the world by a very long mile, even something restricted to only one country can have so many users. So our journey began with actually trying to understand WeChat, how could we create something for agents, what did they want, what helped them so sell and what worked for them. And we found it was really, really difficult. So it was very, very hard to find a company in Australia that could even help us set up a WeChat account. So at the time, um, international businesses actually weren't technically allowed to have a WeChat account. So you could buy an account from another company or you could, um, to register one in China, you had to have a registered business in China. And that's a very difficult process. You either had to have a joint venture with another Chinese business or you had a minimum requirement of spending a lot of money and having a lot of stuff in China. So when you think about it from a social media point of view, it was really, really restrictive and really difficult. Um, luckily, over time and by 2019, that's become a much easier process and they've really opened that up. Uh, but that was a lot of research and learning for us. So once we finally did work out how to get a WeChat account, how to promote on it, how are we going to post in Chinese and manage that because we didn't have anyone in our marketing team that spoke Chinese, uh, we launched a, our first campaign and sold, a biz sold an entire building in a development almost completely through WeChat. So we were pretty blown away and we knew that there was really something in it. So talk to me about the content that you produce for the developers or the developer campaigns. You had an interesting angle where you had a lady who speaks Chinese, but she's actually from Australia, blonde haired, blue eyed. So how did that come about? Yeah, absolutely. So that all comes down to uh, the fact that WeChat has some really strict rules around publishing and what kind of content you can advertise. So there is built in advertising features to WeChat just like there would be on Facebook or Instagram. You can pay and promote an article but it's heavily restricted in, in certain ind industries. So to get around those restrictions because you cannot advertise real estate um, through WeChat is you look to influencers who have a following or groups that have a following. So the way to get everything out there is to find someone who wants to share your message for you. Um, and that's also very much the same in uh, Western social media as well, that large influencers with large accounts um, will promote something and get it up very effectively. And it's the same in China. So finding someone who has the right kind of audience that you want to reach who can share your message. And one of those uh, people was um, a lovely girl called Amy Lyons. So she um, lives between Australia and China and she actually entered a televised Chinese language com uh, competition and one is, was one of the first international people to do that um, and gained an almost overnight social media following um, as a beautiful blonde bubbly uh, Australian girl who could speak fluent Chinese um, and she's been very popular so we have used her in a lot of our campaigns to present some of our properties and locations, uh, tour around a suburb and introduce um, why people love the suburb and why you should live there all in Chinese. So that's something that was um, really fun, exciting and different and got a huge amount of exposure for the projects we were working on. So Harriet, in your opinion, why should real estate agents use WeChat or focus on the Chinese? Yeah, that's a really important question to ask and I think it's the first thing that a real estate agent should sit down and think about is is this a market that I want to go for because um, you do need to do quite a lot and work quite hard at that strategy and it's a long-term strategy as well. So in terms of the Chinese audience in Australia, um, for your average real estate agent that's not selling a development, that's still a really important market. Compared to other migrant populations, historically people will migrate to another country in search of better jobs and better work. 
um, in China, that's not always the case that you know people do come from some really wealthy Chinese families and they're looking for a different lifestyle and the clean fresh air, the beach lifestyle. So those migrants, more than many other different cultures, are coming with a lot of money already um, and they can't bring a house with them. <laughs> so they are looking for homes, they're looking for high value homes especially. Um, and on top of that you also have 660,000 visitors from China every year, so that's a huge market. Um, so you might have heard of Golden Week, for example. Golden Week is a year where just about everybody in China has a holiday at the same time. Sometimes you see in the media crazy pictures of huge traffic jams on Chinese highways. Um, and a lot of time pe people that travel to Australia during Golden Week, they do that to tour properties and look for investments as well. And what time of year is Golden Week? That's in October. Um, so that's where you might see a lot of tourists coming through. And you might start to see a lot of real estate agencies that are advertising in advance um, a lot of the opens that they've got. And if you yourself are a real estate agent, you might have noticed that you've had quite a few inquiries around that time. So that's more to do with the offshore buyers. So I guess there's two different categories and there's two quite different strategies for how you would reach them. So in Australia, there is a huge, um, a huge Chinese community. And then in China, there are a lot of buyers who are looking to invest in Australia. And a lot of that is to do with uh, the fact that the economy is seen as a lot more stable, the money that you could spend, you could be um, buying you know, a 40 square metre apartment in Shanghai versus a four bedroom home um, in Sydney. So you get a lot more bang for your buck and also education is another huge priority as well that many families want to send their children to Australia for an English education um, and part of that they, they might move over to support them or they might buy their children a home. So there's a lot of reasons um, why offshore purchasers look to buy in Australia as well. Uh, but you can't forget the big community that's here in Australia already. Um, so it's in the millions the amount of Chinese speaking uh, residents in Australia. So when you're thinking about marketing on WeChat, it's you know not just the new migrants, but um, there are people that have been here for a very long time who are still um, very much connected to their Chinese culture and their local community. And they might not even have a Facebook account because WeChat is the primarily mo primary mode of communication. So thank you. Thanks for coming today. Thank you for having me.